Hello and welcome back to the latest episode of my Love Machine podcast. Now today I'll be talking to you about something really, really wonderful, all about having a conscious relationship. Now today I'm joined by a wonderful coach who I've recently been introduced to, Marion Jeunet. Now Marion is a conscious relationship coach and she helps women to heal their unhealthy patterns so they can flourish in a fulfilling relationship. And her coaching helps women to get the healthy and fulfilling relationship they have always dreamed of. So they can stop losing themselves in toxic relationships and feeling anxious and insecure. And of course, guys that are listening as well will have lots of advice for you. So don't worry about that. I'm sure you can learn lots from Marion today. So welcome to my show, Marion. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be, uh, to be on your show. I heard a lot about you. So <laughs> it's good to finally meet you. That's always good to know. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's always nice people are honoured to meet me. It makes me feel very, very important, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So first of all, tell me about yourself. You are a, a conscious relationship coach. For those that aren't really sure, can you just briefly explain what that means, please? So conscious relationship, um, well, it comes from a place where people choose to have a relationship that will get them to grow. So they're using the relationship for seeing that, seeing some of their, um, and it's say things that they cannot see on their own because a relationship and any relationship, it works not only for romantic relationships, but also any type of relationship, even someone that you work with, you know, will come to, becomes like this, this reflection, this mirror that comes to teach you something about yourself. So it's choosing consciously to want to look at things that um, you might not, if you're in a, in a sleeping state, let's say, you might, you might not see. So it's very much the way I see it is, is yeah, it's growth, is wanted to grow through the relationship. It is, it is an opportunity not only to have a fulfilling relationship, but also to be able to heal some, some past wounds, whether it's from a next, uh, a next relationship, a past relationship, or something that is much deeper from, from childhood. This is uh, usually putting, giving us the opportunity uh, to, to rewrite something that, that was left uh, unresolved from the past. Okay, so it's about finding a purpose and getting your true intention and healing these wounds that so many of us do have from childhood. I've commented on this before, but many of us have really bad experiences when we're young that can absolutely ruin our futures because all we do is think back on them and reflect back on these things. So why is having a conscious relationship so important? Well, I guess it all depends how you look at relationships. If you want to grow with a partner, if you want to, the way I look at it with my partner is, is my healing partner. So it comes like permanently, whenever there is something that comes to trigger me, I can choose to look at it as, oh, wow, it's too challenging. I'm done with that. This doesn't work. I can blame him. I can try to change him. Or I can choose to look at the, the, the glass half full and look at it as, wow, it's an amazing opportunity to see see something that I didn't I didn't realize that that was going on within me that I still have this fear and I still had this wound or either being abandoned or rejected or not being seen or understood and through him I can see I can see what is still very uh, what's what's still very unhealed within myself uh, and I think it's like it's it's a it's a huge opportunity because whenever when we were children our our, meet, our needs sorry were not met by our parents, uh, with, which happened at one point. Let's be honest. I think uh, the the most devoted and amazing parents could not be uh, meeting our needs all the time and so when I mean when I talk about childhood wounds I don't only talk about extreme cases of abuse I talk about many things that most of us uh, I think don't even remember because they happen at a very very early age between usually zero and and six or seven um, and this is this is uh, this is your opportunity with our partner to see what didn't what was not met uh, to reconnect also with our inner child that might be frozen in time somewhere left alone and this is yeah this is this is the opportunity for me it's like the biggest opportunity that we have 
for for transformation um, and and of course this is something we can do on our own but having someone so close to us that is always with us the reflection is 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 even bigger and and it's more even more obvious so we can really see it as I said, that's something also that can be that can be seen in our relationship with our friends, with work colleagues, with flatmates, with whoever is is gravitating around uh, around us. So, is this coaching with individuals or with couples? So, I work exclusively with with women that are going through this challenge of going from one relationship to the other, not feeling fulfilled, and I help them to overcome the the unhealthy patterns of reproducing the same thing over and over again. Usually it's, it's, very, it's very often linked to um, of, of, with child and wounds or a previous partner with who they had something that was not completely resolved. Uh, and, and through that, so not only they can finally feel fulfilled in a relationship because they feel, they, they get to the point where they feel whole and complete where they don't need someone to meet their own needs, where they come out of this, of this dynamic of unhealthy dynamic of codependency, where, um, where, where, where they don't have any, any power, where the power is given away to, to their partner. Um, and through that, it helped them also to rewrite their own story to, to, because I feel like, changing i mean we can be changing relationship over and over again and changing partners but what uh you know the the, the wound that is no hasn't been dealt with will be coming back um with with time and it will just be changing a warm body for for saying uh you know it sounds a bit bad but really for for another and having the same uh, the same challenges coming back and actually one one exercise i do with my clients is really to sit down and look at all the past experiences all the past relationship and see what are the common traits and and mostly the the negative traits of our partner what are the points of trigger what are the the main um what are the conflicts coming coming up over and over again and also looking at the relationship they had with their parents uh, the relationship of the mother with the father, of the dynamic, of all the also belief system that came out of that. And then usually putting in parallel both, they can see, wow, I'm carrying a lot of things in my relationship that come from what I've seen, what was like my reference in terms of, 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 um, of relationship, of love, of intimacy. Um, yeah. I agree with you. I think many people do come from a background where their parents always argued or they didn't quite get the attention that they deserved during that time. And then they, when they're adults, they struggle to get the same connection or to get a deep connection. And you're right, people do relive the same patterns and date the same emotionally unavailable men over and over again. And things often happen, they end up in a toxic relationship because of this. So how would somebody benefit from clearing out all these negative energies? Well, I think by bringing awareness and knowing, okay, this is my pattern. This is what happens usually. This is my fears. Um, first of all, it's always, you know, being able to, to bring it to the surface and see, okay, this is what goes on. Um, and then it's about working on the relationship with the self. So getting to know what are my triggers, what are my fears, what do what 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 needs uh, didn't get met when I was little, so I can reconnect with my inner child and reparent myself. So I'm completely responsible for meeting my own needs, and I'm not asking to someone else to do it. And coming from that, then. I don't need someone to come and fill this in a void so I can feel better. Um, I come from a place of abundance when I meet someone and I go and come from a place of lack and, and despair. Despair? Despair? <laughs> despair, yes. That's despair, right. thank you. I absolutely agree. I think that can really, really benefit because people don't need somebody to complete them. They don't need somebody to find their other half. I say this all the time, one of my many coaching phrases that I use because you should be enough, you are enough as you are. Someone will love you, you are very lovable, but self-care and self-love, they're two topics I work a lot on with my clients. And I think obviously you must deal with these a lot yourself. So can you give our listeners any advice on self-care or self-love, getting to know the true person inside you and loving them? 
Mm, I think, I mean, I mean, I'm going to talk about myself a little here. Um, I was at the time, I remember I was living in London and my life was like, I was never stopping. I was not taking time to, to really sit with myself. And I think just uh, for people that, that are not used to, to do that, this is a, a good start, a good place to start, just even to dedicate you know something realistic whether it's it's half an hour a day or an hour a week for a start whatever feels right and just just be with yourself which means doesn't no reading no watching something really whether it's a it's being in meditation or not even you know just just taking the time to be to bring the the awareness of the body also how do i feel uh, I think we tend to, to, to go on with our day with never really checking on what, how did I wake up today? What is emotion that comes, that, that comes um, when, I, when I sit with myself and just, and just be with the emotion, whatever it is. And that sounds, very, that sounds very simple and basic, but I think that's a great place to, to start. And then just to look at, I think, observation being able to detach and not be completely identified by a situation. So this capacity of looking at, as an observer, almost like being able to look at this full picture and zooming out and, and, and just, uh, okay, like what happened this morning in this situation? And whatever it is, uh, someone was rude to you in, in the tube or, um, you know, what it, whatever it is, something, a challenge, uh, arise with your partner or with a friend and and look at what okay what does that remind me of there's a lot of i have this kind of like um clearing process that i'm using a lot and it's some simple questions when i'm triggered or and, and my clients are working with it also of what how do i feel right now am i present am i here now or am i back in time in a situation um of the past and and yeah what does the situation remind me of and things like this so i get to understand okay this has nothing maybe to do with what's happening now it's waking up something from the past and i have now the opportunity to what well, to look back at it and ask myself what did i need at that very moment um so little things like that and and yeah for me i, I think um, yeah, almost. I mean, I always work with the inner child. So reopening the dialogue because it might be a child that we left um, at, a, at a certain moment. For, well, I like to, to look at it like it's a situation that is frozen in time and go through meditation, through sometimes just putting your hands on your heart and, and really um, starting the dialogue. And OK, like this is me as an adult, you and um, uh, how are you today? How do you feel? What are your needs? Um, how can I be here for you? And, and so on, and just be open to listening. Because through this, uh, I can see really when people start working with the inner child, like change start to happen. Um, very, very, uh, you, you can see the difference of before and after. You can see how people become the parents of their own inner child and then don't need don't need um, external approval, external, um, you know, um, confirmation and, and so on. That can be really powerful learning to reconnect with your inner child. I do it myself to some degree in a different way because I teach people to be more playful in their lives. And the inner child is there. We are still children inside, just in our adult body. So learning to be playful, learning to have fun when it comes to dating and in relationships is so important. So your inner circle, your inner circle, your inner child is there and it's very much part of you and it should never be shut out or locked away. And I think you're absolutely right. Call back to it and make it feel happy and reassure it in the same way perhaps you weren't reassured and comforted mm -hmm. when you were small. So when you're dealing with these conscious relationship coaching sessions, what challenges do you face with people? What blockages do people most come to you with? Typically is, uh, is problem with trust and a lot of people that want to have the control over their, over their partner also. The, um, a lot of insecurities. So because there is insecurities, there is this need of this illusion of wanting to control what's happening on the other side. 
um, that's a, that's a classic. Um, and, and also I can see a lot in women and I can see it in, in myself also, this tendency of giving the power away by stepping into the shadow of the victim of, yeah, so like poor me and it's all about the situation, bl blaming the other person or trying to change the other person and not taking responsibility for what's happening within. And I think this is one of the, or the big, big, big uh, pillar, I would say, of, of conscious relationship is to be able to recognize this is my stuff. This is my stuff and you offered me an opportunity to look at it. And even if you did something that, um, that obviously was not respectful or whatever it is, uh, this doesn't make it okay. But to be able to take responsibility, I give you an example of uh, a client of mine that was that was waiting for for her partner for hours and hours and like anyway doesn't matter really what happens but she she started to be extremely triggered and when he came when he arrived um she she completely she blew up but she started to blame him and and afterwards she realized she said to me wow i actually realized that when i was little i was waiting for hours that my dad to come to pick me up and although my partner um made me wait and didn't send me a text i realized that the the biggest part of, of of the of the trigger was nothing to do with my partner it was just relieving something from the past that i haven't completely that i haven't even remembered and it's only took me a few days to look at the situation as an observer and to detach and, and disidentify for what was going on that i could see yeah wow um there is a, a massive part of uh, i could have taken the responsibility when i had this this um uh, this talk with my partner to say wow that was you know this triggered me because when i was little this happened um now it doesn't mean um she could not have said to her partner, well, you know, next time let's try to arrange things differently. Or uh, obviously he, was, he, he couldn't contact her. So, you know, in, in the, on the other side, this is what happens on the other side as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's say it doesn't matter what the situation is to be able to look at this doesn't happen just randomly. It happens because there is something for me to learn and something that if I'm triggered, I will not be triggered otherwise. I would just not be reactive to to the situation and the and the other thing also is a uh, lack of boundaries is people to lose their, lose themselves in relationship to come into this codependent codependent uh place where um you know they want to be loved so much that at any cost they will just be they will just be people pleasers they will just be doing whatever it takes and then completely losing the connection with themselves. I find sometimes women that come to me have a slightly different problem. They're all very common ones that you've discussed, but also many women come to me and they're so used to having control when it comes to their, their work life. They've got very powerful jobs and lots of maybe what I call masculine energy when it comes to this. And therefore giving that away and trying to be more feminine when it comes to relationships can be a bit of a problem. Do you ever come across that and how would you deal with that? What advice would you give them? That's a, that's also a big one, I think, in the, in the society we live in and how things are, are changing. Um, it's funny because I was listening to, to a podcast the other day um, and it was something was brought up about that that I find very interesting. So that was um, the, the guest were the men that wrote uh, women uh, come from men come from Mars and women from Venus or something like this. I can't remember yes. the exact title. And he was talking about uh, hormones and he was talking about uh, what happens is so th th this paradox. So in a way, it's good to feel whole and complete when we come on the dating scene. But at the same time, if, uh, if we are in the place of I don't need anyone, I'm this strong independent woman, then like the resonance, I mean, the, the vibration we send outside uh, is not really attractive because we're not in the, in the feminine receiving position. And I, uh, I would say, I mean, that's something I'm working on, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm just starting a training on feminine, uh, feminine embodiment and everything that has to do with reconnecting on the, with the wisdom of the body and of the state of flow. That we're naturally in when we are in a state of um, when we are in, in in feminine energy. So I think 
uh, it, it's learning how to receive, it's learning to just relax. And that by doing this doesn't mean we're less strong or less capable of, um, you know, and, and just allowing the process um, in, in allowing the process and, and, and allowing someone to take decision also and not having to, to do everything all the time and to come. For me, it's something actually that, that was very challenging and it comes down to something very simple and very similar to what I was saying to you earlier uh, is to be able to just sit and, and not do as much and it starts by this. To be connected to, I work also, it's funny because I also work with uh, the divine feminine and the, the connection with our own cycle as women and understanding to work with the cycle and not against, against it. So learning that when we're going through menstruation, for instance, it's about stopping, it's about going in, it's about just being in a, in a just being and not doing. It's accepting the moment, isn't it? And being present and just being still an element of mindfulness as well. And I struggle with that personally. I struggle to sit still and I struggle to have a moment to myself just to think and relax. And you've reminded me even today after this podcast, I'm going to spend 20 minutes sitting down, just doing nothing and not even trying to think because I don't do that enough. And I think listeners, it's a really beneficial thing to do to sit back, reflect, do nothing and take that moment just to really think about what's going on in your life, maybe be appreciative, have some gratitude. Just don't think, just relax and enjoy the moment. Now, what advice would you give to someone who's listening, who is trying to just generally date more consciously? What advice would you give them? I would say to, so as I said earlier, to develop this, this relationship with yourself and understanding really uh, what you are, who you are, what do you want? I think it's very important to, if you don't know yourself, how can you, can you know what you want? Uh, I think it comes down to that. Being able to, to see what do I want from a relationship? What really, how do, if I look at the perfect relationship, what is it that is important for me? What are the non-negotiable? What are the things that I know are my strong boundaries? Um, because this is what I think is the difference between bringing someone, I mean, we're always going to attract someone that helps us to do some, some inner work, but having boundaries is going to be the difference between if we come from a childhood of, of a childhood, sorry, of abuse is what's going to be the difference between reproducing that and having someone that, you know, that is really having a very unhealthy dynamic in the relationship. Um, and, and I always see that as, you know, a wound that you would reopen and put lemon in or salt or something and just make it worse. So that's why it's very important to have the boundaries in place because by the time, and I think it's important to do it beforehand because by the time we come to, to meet someone and, you know, you go, you go on a few dates and you have a lot of things in common and, and, and you really connect with the person we fall in love so, I mean, we can fall in love very quickly and falling in love is very unconscious. So I think it's very important to, to be prepared beforehand to be able to, to, see, to, to see the red flags when they come and, and stop things before it goes to, to, to where well, we go too deep within the relationship. You're right, it's very, very hard once you've established patterns and routines and boundaries. If you haven't set these things, then trying to change them again once you're two or three months, even six months in, can be very, very difficult. Can you just clarify what boundaries might come up more often for you? Um, I think the, 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 the balance between me time, us time, and the rest time, the way I see it, I see it as like this kind of, circle with three different you know they perfectly like divided into three and one part for me is the time with self so as you said earlier taking the time for you to just sit down to be with yourself to be you know doing like some 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 being in a state of gratitude uh looking also whether it's like uh playing with your your wonder child as i like to call it or 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 reassuring your your wounded child uh, but really having this time and these moments for yourself where in term, you have almost like a, there's a boundary of space also. So you can be on your own for, you know, that many hours a week or I don't know, once a month you go away. 
whatever works for you, but really have this defined that this is something that is necessary for your for your mental health, your emotional health, your your spiritual health, and your physical health, and um, and also have moments defined where okay, that's time when we are together, when we 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 can plan loads of different fun things to do, and we explore the world together, uh, and we we learn from one another. And the the third part is um, your for me, it's like my life purpose. It's like what you what you're bringing to to the world. What is your call? How and also for me it includes the the social life. You know, people that I can, um, I can, I can that nourish uh, that nourish me. You know, having a conversation, a deep conversation with a friend. Uh, you know, or or what I'm doing with women when I do uh, a cacao ceremony. Everything that has to do with with life purpose. What is a cacao ceremony? <laughs> I noticed that on so, your website. I wanted to ask you anyway. So, what exactly is that? And how does it work? It sounds fun. <laughs> so, a cacao ceremony. So, for the last four thousand years, um, it's something that's been practiced mainly in countries like Guatemala, uh, usually Central America, and is reconnecting with this plant medicine. So, um, cacao. I mean, we know this kind of um, very transformed you know, aspect of it, which we call chocolate. But when we talk, the, when we take the cacao that's been grown a certain way, looked after a certain way, not for, um, let's say, massively, pro massively produced uh, purposes, but it's been cared for a family and grown a certain way, following the same tradition over and over again, we come with what we call like a ceremonial grade cacao. And that's a cacao that's been used in communities by the, by the Mayans and the Aztecs, to first of all to connect with our own hearts because cacao has really helps us to get all the feel, feel good hormones like dopamine uh, to rise up and lower the cortisol level so they understood that it makes us it takes us almost in this state of ecstasy and that's a connection with with the hearts directly like we can feel um almost this expansion of the hearts and when we can do that within ourselves then we can come together and celebrate so they used to organize big celebration to come together they were using it also for culinary purposes and 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 also as a medicine for people that had like some blockages um on the heart or on any kind of different bodies whether it was the emotional or the physical or or the or the spiritual so the way i use it i'm trying to reproduce uh to recreate something very similar where uh, i'm doing this with my partner so we do mixed ceremony or we do or i do um uh women only ceremonies and we come together there is different type of movement we're we using the this uh, let's say the fire of the cacao because it's a uh, it's a um, it's an energizer so to move the energy to work with the energy and then whether we we work with uh, i do shamanic journeys with the drum so to take people the idea is always to to connect people through their subconscious, whether it's a body or whether it's through the through the drumming, so they can ask um, the question they have that can help them to move forward in their life. Um, so that's <laughs> that's what is a cacao ceremony. I hope I answered. I give you, I mean, sounds, you get a an idea. It sounds like a toned down LSD trip, <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds fun. It sounds like almost like a natural way of doing that and it sounds great fun exactly and yeah. i want to do that it sounds my sort of thing i think <laughs> i'm always I'm happy sure. to try new experiences where, where yeah. do you buy it from uh so that's a friend of mine that imports it for from el salvador um in in south america and um yeah i mean it's an amazing medicine it's it's very subtle yet powerful and and, and and it works very much with dance. A lot of people now do that. I don't know if you know aesthetic dance or mm -hmm. things like this, where they they using both are very are connecting very well together. So you can't buy it on Amazon. You can <laughs> you can find it. Uh, you can find it in the UK. There is loads and loads. I know a lot of friends are doing uh, cacao ceremonies in different places in London for sure. Uh, it becomes more and more popular. I think it's it's. Um, you know, I've been working also with other medicine like ayahuasca and, and, and San Pedro. And it's, it's a very, it's a very, it's a very good introduction for people that are attracted by plant medicine and they're not ready just yet to, to take that, that leap and, and, and to start with something that is 
much a, a much deeper in, in in profound journey. But I would expect that if they work with a an experienced guide like you, it's going to be a lot more beneficial, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's like it's like everything. Having a, a safe container, having someone that guides you, that holds the space, is is always uh, is always the most important for whatever you do. Absolutely, great. Seek out expert help because <laughs> mm-hmm. we know what we're doing in our own different ways, don't we? <laughs> now we're coming towards the end of this podcast. That has flown by. That has flown by so quickly. It's unbelievable. So my last question for you is. If somebody is out there and they really want to seek a more conscious partner and they're out there trying to find someone who can help them on their journey, what signs can they look for and how do they go about doing that? Particularly now, people are doing online dating and things like that. How do you really know if someone's going to be that sort of person? That's a really good question. I think what I would say is to take the time to get to know the person, not to rush things because... Um, and that's something uh, that, that's something I keep reminding myself and I find slowing things down, whatever it is, I find it is a, a great, a great friend in a way, a great ally. Time is a great ally when it comes to this because we have more, um, we can lose this sense of clarity when we meet someone that we like. Uh, so I find by slowing down the process or oh, usually I will see this person again you know, the following day, maybe taking a little bit more time and also um, through asking certain questions, you know, going, not going too deep too quickly, but there's something I, I like to, to, to use. And I've been using it uh, with my partner. I don't know if you heard about the 36 questions to fall in love. Yes, I have. Very interesting so, indeed. Very interesting. And actually not, I would say maybe not all of it, but some of it, I like the fact it goes crescendo, you know, it goes like, it doesn't go too deep, too quick uh to to just get an understanding of where people are at and i think without it to be like a police interview you know to 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 get people to to observe people how they are out of their comfort zone and when it comes to intimacy of sharing about themselves and 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 also taking the time to observe and 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 to breathe into it so to have a better a better um to have more clarity to have a better vision on on the situation Fantastic. Because of course, a true, deep, conscious relationship is one that requires clarity and choice around how you want things to feel, how you want to be loved, how you want to receive love, how you like to demonstrate love, and what your boundaries and non-negotiables are. So thank you so much for that, Mary. Can I just ask if one of my listeners wants to get hold of you, and they want to find out more about what you do, or they want to develop a more conscious relationship, how do they find you? Well, they can find me on my website uh, on marionjunet.com. Um, that's the easiest uh, route and, and they can book a call with me and we can, we can see if we would be a, a good fit to work together. Fantastic. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've learned so much from you today. Mm-hmm. And thank you for making time and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so, so much. It's been a, it's been a pleasure to share with you on that. <laughs> thank you so much for listening. I'd love to give you a free copy of my latest book, which you can download right now from my website, jamespriest.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, I'd really appreciate it if you could share the love by taking a few seconds to write a positive review on the iTunes store right now. See you next time.